Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to World of Amuse, welcome back to Planet Coaster. So this week we're going to be focusing on the early days of the park as we introduce what would have been one of the originals. But no, it's not an arrow, it's a Vacoma. Oh yes, you guys gather around because it's history time. So here in the UK, we never had arrow looping coasters. It was always the responsibility of Vacoma to do all of that. But that in itself is a whole different story. But the short version of that story is that Arrow sublicensed all of their designs to Vacoma because that was cheaper than Arrow either shipping the stuff from the US or setting up shop in Europe. But anyway, this is the coaster that would have truly started the ball rolling for World of View. This is the coaster that would have put them on the map. And this is the monstrosity that I have come up with. With. It's pink and it is black and it is gross. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're designing arrow stroke for coma coasters it's really important to remember that their heyday was the 80s and the 90s all before uh, computer aided design all before any kind of technology came along it was all hand designed hand forged in a foundry so therefore they are a bit jank but this is what you can do so i'm taking a lot of inspiration here from tennessee tornado and i'm also taking inspiration from uh, six flags saint louis uh, ninja so it sort of like sits in between the, in between the two it's not as short as tennessee's tornado but it is not as long as <laughs> ninja is this is what we got it's the station uh, we're going to roll out of the station into the first bend and this is where we are truly ripping off tennessee tornado because it's just got this this maintenance area that's just so blatantly on show it's like boom it's there it reminds me so much of um vampire at chessington's ending where you just walk through or you travel through the maintenance shed so of course this ne is needed in world of years so this is what we've got here this is going to be the, the really disgusting maintenance shed then we come down one more time and we're going underneath the pathway here so uh, i wanted to make sure that we were using as much of the terrain here as possible uh, and i wanted it to feel like we were uncomfortably using terrain and that's why it sort of goes down the hill here underneath the track and then up here i mean we could have just as easily bought the queue line around this way over here and met the path here right but the queue line needed to marry up with this bit here and the exit path needed to marry up here sorry i've digressed we were talking about the track so we come up the lift hill uh, 30 degrees and it's set to nine mile an hour i think that's probably about the most that a vacoma could do back in the days i mean retrofit it with a decent motor and you could probably make it faster but you probably wouldn't want any more than that then it comes into a tennessee tornado style first turn uh, where it's going to play with the hill a little bit and then it comes up this way and then down into its first drop 56 degrees no more than that um you, i mean they're capable of of doing that but for something like this it's fine and then we stick to that true early arrow stroke for coma principle of put your riders through as much as you can as early as you can while you have the momentum in the train because these trains are heavy and they slow down quickly so they pack the punch in the first part of the course and then really start to wind out towards the end and they really start to peter out so that's why we have a loop and then we come into a sidewinder, which comes into a turnabout and then comes underneath the track again into a corkscrew. And then you've got this long section of track, which I'll talk about in a second. And then it comes into the end of the course, which is where it just starts to peter itself out. You know, it comes into a snake pass here or a, sorry, a turnaround here. And then it just snakes its way back to uh, back to the brake run here. So that's pretty much how vacomas were they were like pack as much of a punch in the beginning and then start to meander it through i do need to just work on some of the train to make it make sense as to why this meanders because at the moment this is relatively flat right so you're probably sitting there thinking well why don't you just do something different with the course it just works right but uh, we'll need to do something with the terrain here to make it look like it is actually snaking through the terrain and this is how they've decided to uh, decided to do it and this bit here by the way is put here as an evacuation area if it was needed because this bend here is a a potential valleying risk so if it were to valley here the train would roll back down this way it would enter into the corkscrew it would valley here and slowly but surely it would rest in this area and then you'd be able to evacuate the train from here so see there is some method behind the madness <laughs> it does all make sense it's a <laughs> it's a little bit like the um the Hyder Park uh, big loop coaster, uh, similar similar sort of principle. But as I said, this is how the area is, is shaping up. So I wanted the exit path to come into this area and I wanted it to do so uncomfortably so. That's why it's so close to the... Um, 
to the roof here. I mean, you probably could jump on top of it if you wanted to, but please don't. <laughs> and I wanted the queue to then come underneath here, underneath the track and whatever. By the way, three trains on this one. Uh, or it depends on your budget. You you might be able to run it on two, but I think the course is just a little bit too long to run it on two. This works fine on on three. Ninja runs on three, so we're good to go. Uh, and last thing to show you on here is just how much I've managed to cut off the sightline with these windows. <laughs> All of that careful planning has gone. <laughs> And I, I kind of like it. So anyway, this is how it's looking from the top. Uh, I just need to go and do some work. I'll see you in a minute. Oh, I tell you what, you guys, I'm liking how this is starting to turn out. I mean, I am still stealing from the Smoky Mountains, let's be honest. This building is very, very, very similar to something that's over there. But hey, it's okay. That's what we're here to do. We steal things in this channel. And guys, I have actually learned from Rona, I'm still not cured. I still do need to go and rest. So for that reason, there are no supporting rides in this area. But I do think there's probably going to be one here. There may be one here. So what I've done is I've started to fence it off and actually allow that to, to take shape and whatever. So it's probably going to be around one here. I'm thinking maybe the Enterprise. Maybe there would be a Ferris wheel up here as well. Let's watch this space. It's future me's problem. Let's deal with the scope of this episode. And that's what we're here to talk about. It's the, is it a Vacoma? Is it an Arrow? No, it's a Vacoma because we have them here in the UK. And you've been lectured on the matter. So, <laughs> but let's be honest. It may as well be Arrow. <laughs> So this is what I've done over the last couple of hours. I've started to kit out the buildings and I've started to um, support this. So the, the in-game supports for this are, are fine. Uh, they are largely acceptable. But what I've done is I've actually started to put some of the uh, more custom supports in here, particularly around the loops and the corkscrews and stuff. And yeah, I've taken, I've taken my cues from Arrow, uh, remembering that... Arrow would have outsourced it to Vacoma, so Vacoma would have built it how Arrow would have done, and this is uh, this is apparently how these work. I always thought they had side bracing, but apparently not. Tennessee Tornado apparently says no, so uh, that's what we're going for. <laughs> that's what we're going for here. Uh, this is, as I said, the rest of the in-game supports they're all completely acceptable, so I'm not going to bother to go back and, and change them. Everything they are, they are what we are. Likewise with this corkscrew here, I know that it would probably be a more loose corkscrew that would come diagonally this way. Um, I just don't have, the, I don't have the patience to do a custom corkscrew. The in-game one is is perfectly fine, so it does what it needs to do. So, in terms of queue line, then this is what we've got here. Uh, it doesn't need to be a, a very long queue line. It's a, a a ride that has probably dwindled in popularity over the years, and they've only the only reason they've not got rid of it, not got rid of it. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> The only reason they haven't ditched it by now uh, is because it's too valuable for history, for the history of the park. So it is here. So what they've done over the years is they've shortened the queue because there's just no there's just no demand for it. And likewise, they possibly may have actually rerouted the exit path here. So I did have visions of this exit path coming down into this little patio area that I've put together um, to make this all make sense. But it feels like that as the park has started to grow and as the park got busier and busier they wanted to redirect the traffic back into a plaza area rather than through a building so that's kind of what I'm going for here let's just imagine that there would have been stairs or steps or something here that guests would have come down and then this uh, this little pathway here didn't exist but over the years they've ended up putting this in and as a result you can now spread the guests down this way right so that's what we're saying that's the story and we're sticking to it <laughs> <laughs> so the station then, this is very much taken inspiration from the uh, Alpine coaster in the Smokies uh, that we've obviously used other buildings and stuff for the... Um uh, the cable cars and whatever. So I like this idea of having a slanted roof. Um, I like the idea of having the the stone cladding, and I like the idea of having the wood. It feels like this is this is pretty much how this how this building would look. What I've done is I have just added um, like a, a an alternative slant to the roof as well, just to give it a bit of personality. I didn't want it to be a completely slanted roof, and I've also made sure that the roof goes over the queue line here, and um, not so much over the path here. But it's because you it rains in the UK a lot, right? <laughs> we we famously talk about about British weather and how rubbish it is. It's not a lie. It rains a lot here. So <laughs> I've just made sure that the queue line is, is kept uh, is kept clear and stuff from this. So that's what we're going for. Inside the station then, uh, lots of exposed beams going on. Um, I need to put lights and stuff in here and finish and finish this all off. But I'm starting to kit it out with all of the usual Theme Makers Toolkit stuff. So here's your push points and your baggage hold and all of that sort of stuff. So 
it's going uh, it's it's going on in here i've decided to keep this side open and uh, this side enclosed and i've actually decided to make the wall uh, if i just go in here uh, i've i've decided to make the wall hollow in the middle so i'm trying a bit of a, a different a different design i didn't want to have a massive platform here and i still wanted to have the cladding here so that's what i'm going for here uh, I'm not entirely sold on the idea, but it's not hideous. I don't hate it, so <laughs> it, can, it can stay. And then over this side, uh, I have just put in the control panel and the control booth and whatever. So nothing special. Uh, it, I, I wish we could move it in game. We can't, obviously. Um, I know that there's mods that you can make it disappear and stuff, but... I wish we could move it, but we can't. So it's there, and it, it is what it needs to do. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to stagger some of this or whether I'm going to keep it as a as a straight line. I haven't decided yet. I need to play out the rest of the uh, the rest of the building to see what happens. In terms of maintenance area, then this is what we've got going on in here. This is an absolute direct rip from Tennessee Tornado. Uh, that's right, yeah, Tennessee Tornado. Uh, all of the stuff along the side here uh, just open to be seen and it's there and it's just shamefully there uh, what i have done though is i have taken some cues from chessington um and i have put in the ability to at least represent there being a black curtain here so if they did want to black it out and they wanted to pull the curtain to hide it from view then they could they just don't <laughs> and i love how hideous it is it's great like as soon as i saw it on the pov i just thought yes that just has that just has to be in what i've done is i've added the catwalks in here as well uh, so i don't have to do custom catwalking it does mean that we've got a little bit of jank here but this little jank here is worth not doing a custom catwalk for so we're gonna live with it what it means though is that the station is now properly connected to the maintenance and service area as is this bit down here so the lift hill is now connected uh, to the maintenance area here so if you needed to get from the lift hill back to the station you can uh, and you can do safely this is operating quite nicely on three trains um, so we've got one in the station here we've got one here and we've got one up here so it's actually uh, a complete accident but it's a happy accident that by the time the train that leaves the station gets to the top of the lift hill uh, the train that's currently at the top of the lift hill is hitting the brakes so it's, it is a happy accident i'm not even going to claim that that was <laughs> by design but hey it works and i'm happy with that and this by the way this is like purposely awkward i wanted this to feel awkward i mean they could have done all sorts they could have put the lift hill in like wherever in a completely different place, but I wanted it to feel as awkward as it currently is. <laughs> and it works quite nicely. And then what we've got here is just some retaining walls. Uh, <clears throat> so we've uh, we've got one that is, like, filled in. Because this is a supporting wall down here. And then one that's, uh, that's along this side that ju is just designed to catch loose dirt and stuff that's flowing, whatever landslips and whatever uh it's not going to be plumbed in like it is with mulch um it is going to be left it is going to be left blank and again if, you, if you're wanting the the inspiration for this have a look at tennessee tornado uh, this is exactly this is exactly what it is don't know whether i'm going to put concrete and stuff under here under here i might actually just make it mud um because tennessee tornado is right so it's fine it is what it is uh and then the other thing just to talk about is the actual access to the maintenance area here so i have decided to bring it around this way uh, and i'm using some lower fencing here and some higher fencing here so uh, the train's not traveling at much speed uh, along here so you don't need don't necessarily don't die fencing but you need to kind of don't die <laughs> but the reason that i'm bringing this up is because i need to find a way of uh, merging three points now so we've got this one here we've got the inverts uh, road and we do also have this one here from the log flume and we have two major paths coming along here. So I'm trying to, my best to not snooker myself with design. But I think the next bit might be a bit of a challenge. So, But that's tomorrow me's problem. It's fine. Uh, and then the final bit in this bit is just this, this tiny bit up here. So I have extended the pathway out. It had originally come down this way. Uh, but I've actually extended it out because I've removed some of the picnic benches that were here because this needs to be a through fare uh, a thoroughfare and if we are going to put a flat ride in here as i said i think it's probably going to be the enterprise or something like that but if we are going to put a flat ride in here then we need to have some kind of plaza area or like a bit of a wider bit here so 
Oh, that's lots of talking. A million miles an hour. There you go. This is what we are looking at right now. I'm going to carry on, and when we see each other again, it'll be done. Well, is it a coma? Is it an arrow? Does it matter? No, because it's done for now. <laughs> <laughs> and it sits so perfectly on the sight line. This is pretty much as I as I wanted it to be. Layout is slightly different to how I envisioned, but it's pretty much how I wanted it to be. And I'm loving how this is sitting. Foliage and trees, just like all the time, has made it come to life. And it's now perfect. It's now exactly where it needs to be. So no name for this one just yet. The vote hasn't actually happened. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've even invited suggestions. So let's do that. We're probably going to need that before we start a vote, right? Comments in the suggestions for a name for this one, please. And then we'll put that to the vote and we'll make that the next one. But talking of names, we have some admin to deal with. Right. So we're going to come over this way first because we have a name for our launched coaster. This one is Skyrunner. So this one is Jamie Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, this is your winner. You officially won that vote. So well done to you. Uh, then we come over to the invert. Where's my invert uh, entrance? There we go. There's the invert. And we have Hornet. This was suggested a couple of times. So I think it was uh, S-Man 804 and uh, Storm Hunted, I think. Um, I'm doing this from memory. How's, how is my memory? <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion for this one. So Hornet was the winner. A couple of suggestions on that one. And then we come over to the Mine Train. Mine Train. There we go. So we have uh, Smoky Mountain Whistler. So this one is a uh, pessimistic videographer. I had to write that one down. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for your name suggestion there as well. So, they are your three winners. Uh, we do have a vote currently open for the dueling coaster. So, that will be in the next episode. And then, of course, we'll name, uh, we'll name the, the not arrow. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's take a tour of this, shall we? Because, uh, as I said, we are done. So this is how it is sitting on the sight line. And this is exactly as I wanted it to sit. Of course, there is going to be a flat ride that's coming in this left-hand side here. So uh, watch this space on that one. But this is this is how I wanted it. Uh, do you know what? The queue has turned out to be better than I actually thought it was going to be. So... Uh, yeah, it's it's happy. I've got some touching up in the area that I need to do. Like, for example, I've just noticed that this queue line fence here is not entirely complete. So I need to fix that. But I'm happy with this for now. Uh, I've just continued across that sandstone um, pathing and the, the pathway and stuff into the actual queue line area. So this is now sitting uh, nicely. It's all clean and it's all tidy and it's looking, it's looking cool. So then we come down this way. Um, I haven't really touched up the path here. I've just left it uh, just left it as it is. And then, of course, it comes across into the raised path, then up into the stairs, and then into the station. So you'll notice that I have continued the theme on the station. It's got neons around the uh, outside as well. And that's so we can make it fit into this whole area, right? So we've got the green here, we've got the blue here, and then we've got the pink in the background. So it, it has to fit into the entire area. It was probably retrofitted uh, in some capacity, right? So... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Inside the station. There we go. Uh, so it's all done in here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's try again. It's all done in here. Uh, everything that I wanted to is now in here. I've, I've kept this one nice and simple. I didn't want to overdo this uh, overdo this station too much. It felt like, because it's a coaster from the 80s, they wouldn't really have done much to it. It's only here. Oh, hello. Uh, it's only here because uh, it's just here for the sake of being here, right? So... It's good to go, but it's got all of its signage. It's got all of its stuff that you needed to. And I did decide to keep this level as well. I did have it staggered like Tennessee Tornado is. And it just felt like it was too much of a ripoff. Uh, I mean, we have to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then around the outside here, just lots of foliage going on. Um, so around this first turn. I did, by the way, think about banking this first turn. Um, but, uh, you know, it works. It's fine. So, um yeah, is what it is. But then we come into the maintenance area in here. So this is now all done. It's now had its final touches. It's got some lights up and it's got all of the stuff that you'd expect. I like the I like how this has turned out because it's just so jank. It's just so awful. But it's so right at the same time. <laughs> it's like it's brilliant. Uh, and then we come over this way into the uh, uh, like the the break run before the lift hill. Uh, again, it's so awkwardly placed because it's just so awkwardly long. 
It's an awkward coaster, and I think it's perfectly awkward. So what I've done here is I did decide that I was going to keep it overgrown. I did decide to put mud and mulch down instead. So it's all good. Uh, and then this is the retaining wall that I was talking about. So this now all makes sense. I have intentionally let this overgrow. I don't think in real life it would be as overgrown as this. I think it would probably be a bit more kempt. Or at least the trains would do some of the, uh, some of the gardening for the gardeners, right? Because... It would catch the bottom of the trains and stuff, but I like how this is. Uh, I like how this is. Lots of catwalk clutter and stuff along here. Then, so arrow coasters didn't really make or <laughs> focal homer coasters. Whichever you go for, we're going to fight about it regardless. Uh, <laughs> they um, always have their catwalk stuff on show anyway, so it's uh, it, you know it is what it is. The bridge then is also done, so I've just put some wood effect along here. I haven't done much to the pathway coming down this way because I need to play out that area and know what's going to happen down there so I've just kitted it out with some random stuff and, and be done with it right uh, it is it's done for now uh, then we've got the lift hill coming up this way into the turn by the way had you noticed that I've changed the colors it was actually changed in the previous update but I just didn't point it out so I changed the colors I didn't like the, the pink and black it was just too garish so I went for brown and green instead and I kind of felt like I needed to have the green supports to start to um, merge in with the trees and stuff, with the green of the trees. So uh, then we come into the main area of the ride, as, as, as we said in the very first uh, the first update, you sort of pack as much as you can into the beginning part of the ride because that's where the momentum is. So this is what you've got and you can see it quite nicely from the pathway. So there's the, uh, there's the loop in the background, there's the sidewinder and then if you look down the pathway it comes into the corkscrew over the path. So happy with that, uh, it's all good to go. This bit here I didn't actually want to put any kind of catwalk clutter and stuff on here. I didn't think it needed it. So uh, I just kept it as a, as a um, platform that could be evacuated from. I've intentionally not finished the fencing around this way because, well, as I already said, I need to find out how all of this is going to join up in this area. So whether there's going to be a ride or something here that would actually change the fencing strategy anyway, I don't quite know yet. So uh, watch this space. Um, and then this is the, the snaking bit that I wanted this coaster to do. And I've, I've changed all of the terrain. In fact, again, the middle update had it already changed and you could tell that by the amount of grass, like, clean grass that there was um but this now snakes nicely through the through the trees it now feels like it makes a bit more sense than it did before the trees and stuff went in and i mean the idea of this is it's supposed to kill all of the speed of this train anyway right so it does what it needs to do pretty pretty perfectly uh, we haven't talked spoken about this uh, already but no on ride photos on this one again i don't think the, the park would make the effort to retrofit them and there are there is a precedent set for major coasters that don't have on ride photos gardaland for example removed the on ride photos from raptor so there you go it does it does happen and it felt like uh, if you put the ride photos and stuff in here, it would clutter it up. I mean, this would be your prime space to put your Photoshop. But actually, I wanted this to feel like it was still part of the uh, the nature bit that we were doing. You know, the plazas and stuff that we've got going on here. So, happy with that. Um, yeah, no on ride photos to report on this one. This is the patio out the back then. It kind of makes sense now. Now it's all kitted out. This doesn't feel too uncomfortable anymore. Um Especially, as I said, there probably would have been a, a pathway or something down here at one point. Uh, but it's it's not there anymore. And it's now a, a patio. And do you know what? Now that the building is in, now the foliage is in, it doesn't feel too bad. Um, I like it. I hate it less, let's say. <laughs> That's probably the easiest... The easiest um, uh, accreditation I can give it so inside here then I've just done a little bit of work again I'm not entirely done with this I do need to come back and do a proper pass of all of the interiors up here uh, when I'm feeling much better uh, but I'm kind of happier with this one um, and the reason I had to do inside here was because I needed to find out what was going on with the strategy of the doors getting out into the patio and it felt like because I was doing that I needed to do the other bits as well so this is kind of done it feels like this is a bit overkill for a coffee and donut shop if I'm honest, <laughs> this feels like it should be more burgers and stuff. So anyway, it is it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> so just to show you how this looks from the top, let's show you at night as well, because of course it's had its lighting package uh, done. So there we go. You can see there it's still got the strip 
uh, going on. So it fits into the area quite nicely. Like, I like how the architecture and stuff is is on here. Catwalk lights and stuff are all uh, are all in, so that all makes uh, perfect sense. And they are all consistently around this side as well. Uh, flood lighting for the queue line rather than uh, direct lighting. I need to sort this middle bit out. But again, this flat right up here needs to come in before I know what lighting space I've uh, what lighting space I've got here. But I really like this area. Like it's it's. It feels like it's been an area that's been around since the park opened. It's been updated and modernized since. It feels authentic. It feels as it should. So I like it. So guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode. I really, really do appreciate you getting uh, to me. Especially sticking through me with, with Rona. Because I know I waffle anyway. But COVID brain is an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do like the video please like it please uh, leave a comment do all the usual stuff for the algorithm we're gonna go for a ride but until we speak again please look after yourselves i'll see you next time bye bye